tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. I'm assuming the cabin and all the that subdivision is just wiped out. Reeling from floods and expecting rain. We're live from Larimer County. A shopping destination considers raising its sales tax. People will look at their receipts and they'll notice. Plus, Colorado fights to keep a federal agency in Grand Junction. This is not my first radio. And blame it all on our roots. We showed up in boots. It's going to be a good night. Good evening. Congratulations. We made it to Friday. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. Thousands of people from across the West are converging on Cheyenne tonight for the unvaccinated. It has the potential to be a super spreader event for the ages. For the vaccinated, well, that's a guaranteed good time. All right, we'll take talk more about the bad bit in just a bit. Right now, let's embrace the good with Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. We understand, Russell, uh, you caught up with a certain uh, country singer ahead of the show tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Shannon, perhaps the biggest country music legend of all time, Garth Brooks will hit this stage in just a couple of hours. And what an opening as the daddy of them all, as they call it up here in Cheyenne, returns for the first time since 2019. Up here, it's bulls and blood, it's dust and mud. His music is like the soundtrack to our lives. Garth Brooks returns to Cheyenne, the headliner on night one of Cheyenne Frontier Days. I'm up here early to figure out where I wanted to sit. Chris Haynes came up from Westminster. His shows are always amazing. Not about to miss this one. So I've seen him seven times in the front row. On stage, he's one of the most iconic musicians of all time. In person, a perfect gentleman. Award shows, great and go records, stuff like that's great, but when somebody comes up and tells you, hey, you were my dad-daughter dance, kidding me. But the return of Cheyenne Frontier Days is about much more than the concerts. Well, I've never seen a baby bull in, like, in my life. This rodeo and festival represents a comeback of sorts for events after a year of COVID shutdowns. We do this in remembrance of our history, trying to keep some history in Frontier and Frontier Days. You can play a little weenie game and go for a little weenie prize, or you can go for the big one. We don't have weenie prizes, this ain't a weenie game. For Andre Evans, this is the place to be. Garth Brooks sold out in 45 minutes. Uh, this is where the action is, and that's why I'm here. She can have the so grab two pina coladas and some friends in low places, and if tomorrow never comes or the thunder rolls, at least you didn't miss the dance. If a concert can turn into a party, hopefully in the first 15 seconds, it's going to be a good night. I took some friends who didn't know his music, and by the end of the night, they're like, that was the most amazing show I've ever seen. It's a party. It doesn't matter if you like his music or not. He's rock, he's country, he's so enthralled with the audience. So that was Garth Brooks. You were watching in the green shirt as he was rehearsing on this stage earlier today. And Shannon, I know you were wondering, what's he going to play tonight? Well, I can tell you the first song of his rehearsal set was The Beaches of Cheyenne. The second song <laughs> of that rehearsal set, Rodeo. Rodeo, of course. I'd say a pretty perfect set <laughs> for this venue. They are in for a heck of a show tonight. Russell, uh, enjoy yourself. Thanks for that. We really enjoyed it. So at 32%, though, Wyoming has one of the worst vaccination rates in the whole country. If you haven't been vaccinated, doctors say this is a good way to get COVID. If you have been, take extra precautions so that if you choose, but you know you're probably going to be okay. It's a super spreader event among the non-vaccinated. It's not a super spreader event with the vaccinated population. If you're not vaccinated, you're allowing this virus to continue to exist in our communities. Organizers have added paperless tickets and sanitation areas, which they might have thought about even before COVID. The event runs through August 1st. Burn scars will be a risk of flooding through the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nielsen is tracking that as well as the weather we can expect in Denver. Mike? Thanks, Jessica. We have issued a Denver 7 weather action day through Sunday, mostly for the mountains and foothills for the potential of locally heavy rain, mudslides, flash flooding, road closures. Let me show you this time lapse that we took this afternoon from the top of the Continental Divide looking down to the east from Loveland Skier. You see the heavy rain that occurred there. And from that, we have a flash flood warning that continues for parts of Gilpin and Clear Creek County, and that goes until 645. Also, a flash flood warning on the Williams Fork burn scar until 7 o'clock tonight. Watches continue to the north around Poudre Canyon, the east Troublesome burn scar, and this is new. There is a new 
Flash flood warning in effect for portions of the Grizzly Creek burn scar. Some heavy rain moving in just around the Glenwood Springs area at the present time. Denver, we've had a couple of thunderstorms move through. We've had some strong gusty winds developing as well. And the strongest thunderstorm activity is south of the metro area, down over parts of northern Jefferson County and Park County. The storms are moving back toward the west, so a little unusual in that direction. If it's looking dark and stormy to the east of you, that's coming your way. And there's a cold front that's going to drop down across the state tonight and tomorrow, and that will focus more thunderstorm activity over the weekend with up to an inch of rain, locally heavier in many of the mountain and foothill areas, hence the Denver 7 weather action day for the high country this weekend. All right, we're seeing a little bit, Mike. Thank you. In Larimer County, a search for three missing people came to nothing today, I'm afraid. But first responders say they'll be combing the water and sifting through the debris again in the morning. Denver 7's Bayon Wang joins us live tonight from the flood zone. Bayon, the people who still have homes have power again? Yeah, hey, good evening, guys. I could confirm by what a few electricians told me about an hour ago that they finally got some temporary pulls up and everybody in this general area where the mudslide happened do have power restored. We also, uh, excuse me, we're also learning from the Larimer, Larimer County Sheriff's Office that they have found more damage in the area. Six total homes they have confirmed with me have been flattened. An additional detached garage has been found to be completely destroyed and one home was also found with significant damage so really other residents in this area are feeling incredibly grateful including two that we spoke to where the mudslide also struck their property well we were sitting in the house there and it was raining a little bit and she looked out and said well the thunder and she said here it comes and it came right down there and across the road it broke out of the ditch up there and come right down through here this is all from the water this used to be grass and as we've been reporting three people confirmed missing one person confirmed kill as for those rescue crews they uh, searched about three four miles today so far about 10 to 15 miles since tuesday they are planning on continuing their operations tomorrow back to you all right bye on wang tonight thanks and in case you need a reminder of why glenwood canyons close so often take a look at this video shot during yesterday's flash flood warning so as a general rule of thumb just expect i-70 to be off limits that way when there's rain in the forecast. It's bad in Summit County tonight, too. This is what 10 Mile Canyon looks like after the rain came through. We'd expect this will take some time to clean up. The Pawnee Power Plant near Brush had to be evacuated today because of a coal fire. We're told the public's not in any danger and no one will be losing power. Jury selection began today in the long-awaited trial of Alex Ewing, better known as the Hammer Killer. Ewing was charged three years ago in the murders of Bruce and Deborah Bennett and their seven-year-old daughter. The three were found murdered in their Aurora home in 1984. The couple's three-year-old daughter survived but was badly hurt. This trial only focuses on the Bennett murders. Ewing will also be prosecuted in the murder of Patricia Smith, a Lakewood woman killed five days before the Bennetts. An Adams County deputy hit and killed a person with his car overnight. The sheriff's office says this pedestrian was walking onto Highway 85 and in two that cruisers passed. Uh, path the deputy was not hurt. The DA's office and Commerce City Police will investigate. Colorado Congressman Jason Crow has successfully lobbied the House to pass legislation to protect Afghan interpreters, guides, and others who've assisted our military overseas. Crow's bill will expedite the visa process and increase the number of visas allowed. The vote was 407 to 16. Congresswoman Diana DeGette was in Denver and didn't vote. The lone no vote from Colorado's delegation came from Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, who says she opposed it because it did not go through a hearing process and did not address her concerns. Concerns of fraud. U.S. Interior Secretary Deb Holland continued her tour of Colorado with a stop in Grand Junction today. The Secretary's visit comes amid calls to either keep Bureau of Land Management headquarters on the West Slope, improve it, or just move it back to Washington. A recent Washington Post report found that more than 87% of BLM staffers chose to quit rather than leave Washington for the West. Still, Colorado's top brass wants to make this work. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert says this has been a slam dunk for her district and that it only makes sense for BLM leaders to live near the land they are managing. Senators John Hickenlooper and Michael Bennett were 
a little more nuanced. Both said this week they support keeping BLM in Colorado, but stress the current state of affairs is unacceptable. Coming up, to pay its bills, Lone Tree considers shopping. The last thing we want to do is anything that's going to hurt our city businesses. Why it'll be harder to get your hands on a Rocky Ford cantaloupe this season. We have a cold front moving in for the weekend, cooler temperatures, but also a good chance of thunderstorms. 